see my hand in front of my face well i knew i was buried in the deepest darkest place and the deeds that i had done put me in this awful place then i felt a stir inside me and a smile came across my face and i said get thee behind me satan for i command it in the name of the lord jesus christ of nazareth get thee behind me satan for i command it in the name of the lord jesus christ in the name of the lord jesus christ Uh, let them know you're in here this morning, y'all. Amen. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Lone Star Cowboy Church. You would take them hats off and pray with me. <laughs> Father God Almighty, it is such a blessing to be in your house. Thank you, Father God, for this opportunity to come and, and let you know how much we love you and we appreciate you and, and we praise you. Father God, we ask that you give us the strength and courage to take this message we're going to hear outside these doors and share them with other folks that we love. We're grateful for you sending Lord Jesus Christ. And in his precious name we pray. Amen. All right, good morning, y'all. Is it good to be in God's house? Amen. Let me see. Let me hear. I ain't heard it yet. Charky, is it good to be in God's house today? Because I can hear you. I can't hear nobody else. It's good to see everybody. Glad you're here. Hadn't seen a couple of y'all in a while. Good to see you. Got a, some visitors somewhere, I'm sure. I'm, I'm, there's a visitor. Everybody say hello to the visitor. Hi, visitor. We stand up and you sit down. That's how we do it here. Glad you're here. Well, it's good to see everybody. Let's just have a good time in the Lord this morning. Did I get anybody's attention a minute ago? I, was just, I, I figure if I can't make that horse jump out there, I didn't say it loud enough. Okay. In Psalms chapter 99, verse 5, exalt the Lord our God. Worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Here we go. This is a song to hate. Let's do it. That angel, get off of my shoulder. That angel. Yeah. 
Just let the guy know you're in here to stay. God's country. Praise God. That song's about just how we carry ourselves every day, not saying we're perfect. That's what it emphasizes, but we live our lives. We, we love God and we love our country, right, Kevin? Amen. That's it. Yeah. And 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. So flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart.
job. Mama's prayers. Nothing beats Mama's prayers. Amen. Well, you know this, Candace. You know why I had Terry does this song. You know why? Because I like it. Here we go. When I was just a boy in days of childhood, I used to play till even shadows come. Winding down that old familiar path, I heard my mother call. Thank you, Terry. Always supper time. In Psalms chapter 145, verse 4, one generation shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. Mm. He wore starched white shirts and button at the neck. He'd sit in the shade watched it. Only if it was in the right key, maybe it would be better. Huh? Alrighty. Alrighty. He wore starch white shirts, <laughs> buttoned at the neck. Sound better. He'd sit in the shade and watch them chickens peck. His teeth were gone, but what the heck I thought 
He walked on water. He said he was a cowboy when he was young. He could handle a rope and he was good with a gun. My mama's dad, he was his oldest son. And I thought that he was on water. If the story's told, only heaven knows. But his hat seemed to me like an old halo And though his wings They were never seen Well I thought That he walked On water He tied a cord To the end of a mop He said Son, here's your pony and keep her at a trot. I'd ride in circles while he laughed a lot. Then I'd flop down beside him. Well, he was 90 years old and 63. Well, I loved him and he loved me. And Lord, I cried the day he died. Cause I thought that he walked on water If the story's told Only heaven knows And his head seemed to me Like an old halo And though his wings I thought that he walked on water Yes, I thought that he walked on water Oh, amen. Anybody know anybody like that? Raise your hand. Anybody got anybody like that in their life? Amen. Thank you for your patience on that one.
theme going on there. Very good, Storm. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, in Romans chapter 1, verse 20, for his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and his divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. Try and put your arms around a hundred year old tree. Climb up on the horse and let him run full speed. Take a look down at the world from 30,000 feet. Our legs Give them all your praise this morning. Thank you all very much. I 
Okay, kids. Come on down. All right, is everybody ready? Today our lesson's coming out of Acts 2, and it's about the Pentecost. Does anybody know what the Pentecost was? What? All right, we're going to learn. What? Does anybody remember what this means? What does Miss Dane always tell y'all about this? Is it, is it the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit? It, it is right all right so there was so we're gonna look at things so they were talking about there's a god right but do y'all see god not always right what about the holy spirit do you see the holy spirit no not always but look do we see the wind blowing do we really see the wind blowing or do we see the effects of what the wind's doing right what about air? Throw that up. Do we see air? No, not always. Okay, we'll get you one. You see, you see, we can't see the air, but we know the air's there, right? Now let it go. See? But we know if air's important. Okay. Do you know that the air's important for us to live, right? If we don't breathe in air, we're not gonna be alive, right? So there's a lot of things that we might not see that's really, really important to us, right? So do you all remember when Jesus died, then he rose again, right? And then you remember what happened, all the disciples were around him, and he made everybody a promise. Do you all remember what the promise was? That he would send us back a helper. Who's the helper do you think he sent back? Does anybody remember who the helper was? The Holy Spirit, right. So all of them, so he told them to go to Jerusalem and wait for me to send my helper, okay? So they all went to Jerusalem, and they were sitting around waiting. Ten days after he had ascended, they were all sitting around in a house, and they heard all of this, whoosh, whoosh, the wind, okay? There was lots of wind. You couldn't see it, but you could feel it and you could hear it, okay? And then there was like little tongues of fire and everything. The Holy Spirit had came and filled that whole room. And everybody got so excited, so, so excited that... They, they had to go out and spread this word. But there were some people who didn't really believe what was happening. So Peter had to get up, and he had to explain to them what was happening. So then everybody got excited, and they had this fire in them, right, to go spread the word. So I'm going to show you all one of the examples, okay? So if I said, Slade, I have free candy. You can have some free candy. When after you get through with your candy, you have to tell somebody. Okay? Can you tell somebody? Okay, Presley will. You want free candy? I want free candy. But <laughs> <laughs> me too. Okay. Say, so tell somebody. All right, get your candy. Ready? Everybody will get free candy just because they ask. And they're sharing the good news, right? Can you share the good news? Can you share the good news? Can y'all share? So if I started giving somebody, I gave Presley candy, so now she's going to tell everybody I got candy. She's sharing the good news, isn't she? So what do we need to do as Christians about God? We need to get excited, and we need to start sharing the good news, right? Even though that we don't see the Holy Spirit, it can fill us. And we need to go spread the news. 
Okay? All right. We got y'all a sack with some goodies in it. You can go back to your seats and do all your goodies, okay? I can't be keep dropping you off on my head. Oh, my goodness. I got one. I tell you what, we've got some cute, cute, cute kids. Now, I want some candy. I want to um, want to thank everybody for being here today, and I want to make you aware of a few of the announcements before we, before we uh, get started. First of all, we uh, we had our uh, vote for the building addition, and this is a modest building addition. And I uh, thank the Lord for uh, the wonderful vote. We had 109 ballots cast, and uh, or there was actually like 114 ballots cast, 109 member ballots cast. And, uh, and, and there was just two no's. Everything else was yes. So I believe that that is a wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, um, uh, blessing. It's a wonderful testimony. The church says, look, let's just continue to move forward and uh, uh, not allow something such as COVID to live, allow us to live in fear. Let's move on in victory. So praise the Lord for that. Uh, so uh, we are it's, yeah, we are moving forward on on that process, and ho- hopefully soon we'll begin to start seeing some things happening here. So, uh, the last week you guys started a little a fundraiser for that building edition, and it's the uh, quilt there that was made from the Vacation Bible School. There's one of the age groups there, and it's got a picture of the kids. Uh, and uh, that's going to be uh, for a raffle. So uh, they're uh, they're uh, five dollars a ticket. Ain't that correct? Okay. Yeah, and so we'll have tickets back there. If you'd like to purchase a, a ticket for that, uh, that's just going to be for the for the fundraiser. We also, Damon, would you turn the air conditioning up a little bit? Also, um, we've got tomorrow night service uh, starting at 7 o'clock. Now, I'm tired. I am tired of COVID. All right? I'm over it. I'm over it. Um, and, uh, and so... We're going to start back, uh, not this week, but next week, we'll be starting back with our Monday dinners. Okay, somebody tell Cheryl. We'll, that'll be at 6.30 and then regular service at 7. We'll be starting back to our uh, Wednesday dinners and regular service on Wednesday, not this week, but next week. Okay, regular youth, children, all that stuff. So, um, and all the regular activities. We're already roping steers. Uh, that's on Tuesday nights. Come out and be with us. Uh, help us with that. Be a part of that. So it's time to move forward. It's it's time to it's time to uh, get our churches, get our people back in our churches. Uh, what a time we live in right now. Uh, we got we've got. Uh, psychotic people destroying the cities and we got our churches empty somehow overnight and I want to make this very clear this what's going on in all these cities is not a racial thing okay it's not a racial thing I see all kinds of little col- uh, 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 color of, of young people out there destroying our cities all right we see little white kids out there acting like fools. We see some black kids out there acting like fools. We see Hispanics out there acting like fools. And it's time for this city, this silliness to stop. It's time for it to stop. We've, the, the churches have, have, are depleted. I'm talking to somebody today. They said they had six people in their churches. The devil is fired up. He is working hard. And we are not going to let him destroy us, right? We're going to just continue to move forward and... But again, this, with what took place with that man was a tragedy. Everybody in the United States agrees with that. It was a tragedy. It's a tragedy. There's no reason to be destroying our nation when we all agree. Now, and that, that his life was taken seems so simple, so self, silly. But anyway, I, I, I had a message today that was all addressing those things. But, but you know what? I don't want to talk about culture. I want to talk about Jesus today. I don't want to talk about culture. I want to talk about what today is. And today is Pentecost. Today is the day when the Holy Spirit come upon the people. So I'm going to put that sermon to the side. I know Acts chapter 2 pretty good. And we're going to talk about it today. Acts chapter 2 is when the Holy Spirit come upon uh, the people. Now you got to understand that before Acts chapter 2, there was was no thing no such thing as the holy spirit that lived among all people in the old testament you would see the holy spirit lived within some people they would say that they were filled with the spirit okay he would may put the spirit upon one particular person and he had a function and a ministry all 
throughout his life. You would see that the, the Lord would put the Holy Spirit in, into a person for a time. For a time, that person would have the Holy Spirit within them, and they would do what God had called them to do. But, it, they, but God had not sent the Holy Spirit to live among all men yet. Okay? That's why... Jesus said, it's good when I go. Look, it's good when I go. Why is it good? Because the Holy Spirit will come, and he will never leave you. And so, and so Jesus continued to point the, uh, the, or the disciples to the Holy Spirit, saying that the Holy Spirit, your intercessor, will come, and he will lead and guide and direct you. You see, on this side of Pentecost, we have the Holy Spirit that lives inside us. We have that, that quiet yes. We have that quiet, no. We have that quiet, go. We have that quiet, whoa. We've got the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us. Before the Holy Spirit, before Pentecost, the, the disciples, the Christians, those who were followers of the Lord, had to follow the law by the letter because that's the only way they understood how to be uh, Christ-like, how to be a man of God. That's the only way they understood because they did not have the Holy Spirit. Today is the day we celebrate the Holy Spirit coming upon the people you see you may say but uh, uh how did they if they didn't have the holy spirit how did they how did they function how did they how did they really learn and, and how did they how were they able to follow the the lord well they were we, we look at the apostles and we see that they did miracles before the holy spirit we see that they preach great sermons before the holy spirit but you got to understand they were not in field with the Holy Spirit. They didn't have the Holy Spirit's breath in them yet. My mom, when she was passing, when she, uh, I was there at the house, and, and all of a sudden I hear a bang in the, in the bathroom, and I run in there, and I have to push her out of the way to get to her and pull her out into the, into the hallway, and, and we began to do CPR on her. Her breath was shallow, and I'd put my cheek up against her lips just try to see if I could feel any breath. It was shallow. She was breathing, but it was shallow. And you see, that was, was taking place before the Holy Spirit came upon the people. They had a relationship with the Lord. They had God's presence, but they didn't have, to have the Holy Spirit. And that relationship was shallow. It was a shallow breath. That's quite different than if, if I was to um, um, uh, take um, an, an athletic. I was trying to think of one of you athletic guys, but none of you are in here. So I have to just make something up. Okay? <laughs> Take an athlete. You watch the Olympics, and you watch them guys run a short distance, whatever that is, man, and they, they, they blast, and they get to the other end, and when they get to the other end, what's their, what's their breath? <gasps> man, they are breathing. See, that's the difference. When the Holy Spirit become on, at the day of Pentecost, the people before had a shallow breath of understanding God. But afterwards, they were, <gasps> I get it. I get it. I get God now. I understand. I understand Jesus now. I understand God's call for my life. I understand God's desire for my life. I understand the word for the first time in my life. I get it. That was the difference. The day of Pentecost. I don't want to talk about people destroying a city. I want to talk about the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. This is the disciples. This is the other believers. They were all together. Jesus told them to go into, one, they, to go into the city and wait for the gift that were going to be given to you. And that's exactly what they did. They were all in one place together. And they're in one accord. As you see after the Holy Spirit come upon them, it says that they were all in one accord. In church, my first point in this sermon is we need to become a spirit-filled people again. We need to have the, uh, we need to be a people, a nation who comes back to the Lord. We need to be a people in one accord. We are not, it's not going to get better out there. I assure you, it is not going to get better out there until everyone, until we all see a revival that sweeps through our nation again. You see, we don't have peace and harmony and joy and unity and love when we continue to reject the Lord and reject the Lord and reject the Lord and chase after the things of the world. 
You see, uh, 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 godliness and, and love and, and unity does not come when we're in hand in hand with the devil. What's the devil here to do? He's here to what? Still kill and destroy, and he's doing a good job of that. So, church, you, we got to understand it is not going to get better until we see a Holy Spirit uh, 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 intercede in all men, and that there's a revival that takes place. There, we, there, there is not success and, and continued love and new joy and new acceptance. If we want to see this culture divides that is somehow split us all up again, if we want to see that come together, we're not going to do that by special interest groups. We're not going to do that by money. We're going to do that through Christ. And that's it. That's what Scripture tells us. And in this passage, they were all in one accord. This isn't just a bunch of Jewish guys. This is, they've got Gentile men. They've got men from, they, uh, uh, they've got, uh, yeah, they've got Jews. They've got Gentiles. They've got people from all walks. Not all the disciples were not Jews. They were all together in one accord. And suddenly, what sounded like a blowing of a violent wind came upon them. And they filled the whole house where they were sitting. What an exciting day. Suddenly there was a wind that just blew throughout that whole house. <sighs> blew throughout that whole house. As I think about that, I think about a time when, uh, when there was a wind that was blown into a specific individual. See, there was a time when God created this earth and he said, it's good. And he created man and he said, it's good. And he created a woman and he went, <whistles> and anyway, and so he created them. And, he, and, he, and it says that he blew into them their life, blew life into them. You see, there was a day when God blew life into Adam and Eve. And we, from that moment on, have had the life of the Lord blown into us. But there was a day on Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was blown into them. I imagine the day when, Jesus, when God blew life into Adam, it was soft. It was gentle. It was loving. But the day when the Holy Spirit was blown in, it was like a mighty rush of, 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 of horses just blowing through that place because there was something new. It was powerful. The, the gospel was going to be full of power and boldness. So understand that when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive, receive a power and a boldness to witness effectively. That's what the, we understand in this book of Acts. But they were all together in one accord. And it says that this wind blew throughout this room. And i got to ask you today, has the Holy Spirit been blown into your life? Has the Holy Spirit been consumed you? You may say, yeah, I'm a Christian. Well, I want to understand. Okay, great, I'm glad you're a Christian. But is the Holy Spirit active in your life? Are you listening to that still, small voice? Are you saying, God, whatever it is you have for me, I'm going to do it. Whatever it is you want of me, I'm going to do it. Is your faith... Where's your faith? <gasps> wow, God, I can't believe what you're doing through me. I can't believe what you're doing through my church. I can't believe what you're doing around me. Has the Holy Spirit so consumed you that you say, Yes, I, I want all that God has for me. I want all that's in store for me. God, I, I don't want to worry about what the world says. I don't want to worry about, about what the finances says. I don't want to worry about uh, what the media tells me I'm supposed to worry about. I just want all of you. I want you. But you see, we can have that. We can have that in our own life. But we have to hunger and thirst for the Lord. But we've got to understand until our nation hungers and thirsts for the same thing, we as Christians will always see the destruction and despair. But we've got to do one of two things. We either just say, oh, there's nothing I can do. Or we say, Lord, with your Holy Spirit power lived within me, help me make a difference. They were all in one accord and suddenly there was a blowing wind, a violent wind that came uh, from heaven and it filled the whole house. And church, I want us to be a house that's filled with the Holy Spirit. I want people when they walk into these doors, walk away and not just say, well, the pastor had a nice joke, and I got a good message, and the band was great. 
There was people who shook my hand. I want the people to leave saying there was a presence there. There was a presence there. It was different. It was different than what's out, outside. And I want more of that. I want our church to be filled with his Holy Spirit. They saw what seemed like tongues of fire that separated and came and rested on them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. They seen these little fires and uh, that it came and it, and that's why that's why uh, um, uh, Dana does that. That's not like sign language or biblical anything. That's just that's her example of Holy Spirit the fire. That's that's where that came from. And church at this time that this wind blows in, it says that these fires it seemed like this fire came in and it separated and it set upon settled upon each of them. There was another time when this fire was quite uh, amazing. Whenever uh, Moses, remember Moses in the, uh, in the desert? And he's, he's out in the desert. He's just doing his thing. He's just living life. And all of a sudden, he sees this, uh, this plan, and it's, it's on fire, but it's not burning up. And what was that? It's God's presence. He was standing in God's presence at that moment. In church, at this Holy Spirit, this fire that come upon them, that's it's God's presence. God was in their presence. In church, I've got to ask you today, is that your number one desire in your life? Is your number one desire in your life to be in God's presence? Or is your number one desire in your life relationships? Is your number one desire in your life money? Is your one desire... In, this, in your life, power or fame or selfishness. Church, we have got to be a people. You see, our world is going to hell in a handbasket. You all agree with that. And it takes the Christians to be real, authentic Christians to make a difference. We've got to be a people now, when, the, when, when we're confronted with a situation, we can do one of two things. We can either be an example of Christ to that individual, or we can, or we can destroy our opportunity to, to make a difference. And if it's me, if it's me and my flesh, I'm going to screw it up. Because I can sometimes have an opinionated mouth. And so what we've got to do each and every day, especially right now when it's easy to get opinionated, is say, God, through the Holy Spirit, just speak through me. Give me your words. I don't want to give my opinion. I want to give your words. See, when we're following the Holy Spirit, he will tell us when to go. He'll tell us when to woe. He'll tell us when to speak, and he'll tell us when to be silent. But we have got to hunger and thirst for that relationship so that we can be effective. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other tongues as the, as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were standing in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And when they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in their own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, "Are not all these men uh, who uh, are aren't all these men speaking Galileans? How is it then that we hear them speaking in our own languages?" What an amazing day! What did that mean? The Holy Spirit came upon them, and they now had a, they were able to speak in an unknown tongue to them. What's that? This passage right here tells me that the gospel was no longer just for the Jewish nation. They were able to communicate the gospel to all these other nations that were represented. They said that they could understand the message in their own languages. What a powerful time. And guys, we need to be the same. Lord, I pray that you would use me, just as you used his early disciples, use me to be able to speak the words that this person needs to understand. You see, I may not, I, I'm not mechanical. Mike is. Kevin is. They, I, they can speak uh, words that I don't understand, okay? Like metric and standard. What the heck is that? 
Just kidding. <laughs> uh, James is going, no, you're not. You don't know what it means. But see, they understand words and lingo. They, they have a way of talking. They, they, they have their way that they communicate in such a way. And God says, Cherokee, I want, you to be an, I want you to make an influence and an impact on their lives. And so there's times in my life where I got to say, God, then just give me the words to be able to communicate to them. Help me to know how to speak to them. And he says, just follow my lead. Just listen to that still small voice and I'll share through you. We've got to be a people who understands that the gospel is not just for us. We don't just say, great, I got saved, I'm done. We say, great, I got saved. And just like the wonderful example of the candy, now I want to go give that candy. I want to go give that gospel to somebody else. Dave and I come from two different lifestyles. He comes from California. Dave can communicate to people in such ways I'll never be able to communicate because he understands them better. But what Dave's got to say is, I've received the gospel, I believe the gospel, and so I want to share that gospel to my friends. Damon has to say, I've heard the gospel, I've received the gospel, I want to give that message to my friends. Why? Because we are on this earth to make a great difference. The Holy Spirit is living with inside of us, and if we will listen to that still small voice, He will give us the words to speak to make a difference in this world. God and the, and the angels were talking one day up there in heaven. And, and uh, God said, I'm going to send Jesus down. And he's going to live on the earth for 33. I'm making this. I'm the, this is just a pretend story. And he's going to live down there on that earth for 33 years. And he's going to uh, live a perfect life. And, but he's going to have a difficult death. And, uh, and then, uh, but he's going to... He's going to share the, the message with 12 men. And those are going to be the disciples. And he's going to have a lot of followers, men and women both. And they're going to go, and, and I'm going to empower them to go change the world. And the angels scratch their head. And they go, you're going to do what? You're just going to send Jesus down for 33 years? And then you're going to depend on those people to do it? Well, what's plan B, God? And what would God say? There is no plan B. It's up to us. When the Holy Spirit came upon these people, they had a power and a boldness to witness effectively. And they were able to go out and share the gospel of not only people in their culture, but people of all cultures that were represented there. They, some people ridicule them and say, ah, they're just drunk. So that's when Peter steps up and, and uh, he shares an excellent sermon. It says this, Peter stood up with the eleven, this is verse 14. He raised his voice and addressed the crowds. Fellow Jews and all you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk. Um... As you suppose, it's only nine in the morning. Uh, no, one, uh, no, this is what was spoken by the prophets, Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Not just the Jews any longer, be all people. But church, listen to this verse once more. In the last days, Days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all my people. Church, we're in last days. The last days started here, okay, in Acts. That started the last days. We are in the last days. And it says that God's desire from that point on, is to pour out His Spirit into all of us. He will pour out His Spirit into all people. Church, I've got to ask you today, are you living with the Holy Spirit leading, guiding, and directing you? Are you living as a Spirit-filled person? I'm not talking about specific gifts of the Spirit talking about a life has your life been transformed are you a changed person 
not just because you said a prayer, but because the Holy Spirit is guiding, leading. You see, how do we connect with these young people who are trying to destroy a city? We don't do it with hate. We don't do it with bitterness. We don't do it with really clever Facebook posts. We do it through the Holy Spirit. We extend love where love needs to be given. We also need to extend discipline where discipline is given, right? Amen on that one? But we allow the Holy Spirit to intercede through us so that we can truly make a difference in the world. There's no doubt... There's no doubt that the devil, we've, America has, has opened up a door, or around the world, we've opened up a door, and the devil blew it open, okay? He blown the door open, and, and now it seems like it's just Pandora's box. Everything's going crazy. So what does the church do? We live in the spirit, not of the world in the spirit the scripture goes on to say that they lived in one accord I figured they'd be more like Ford guys but apparently they like Toyotas huh no it's Toyota you're an idiot (laughs) they all went on to live in one accord let's go out and let's live in one accord with not only Lone Star but all the other Christians all around the world and let's let the Lord, through our obedience to the Holy Spirit, to through America again and to see another great revival. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this day. And Lord, we pray right now for our nation. Lord, we pray for, first of all, pray for our president. Lord, I want to thank you for a president who said that churches are essential. But Lord, I pray that you'd give him great wisdom. I pray, God, that he wouldn't be thinking about his next whimsical thing to put on Twitter. But he'd be thinking about how do I live in the Spirit. Help us, God, to see a revival sweep through his own heart and mind. Help him be the man of God that you've called him to be. and Continue to be the great leader he has been. Pray that you'd be with our our leaders in Washington. And Lord, I pray that through the Holy Spirit, you would put the right men and women in their environment, Lord, to see a revival sweep through that nation. We would see these men and women who are so arrogant, who are so prideful, so lost. God, I pray that you would we would see them humbly come before you. And Lord, we won't make fun of them. We won't belittle them or berate them for it. But we'd praise you for that. I pray that you would be with our leaders in, that are in Washington or a godly people. I pray that you'd keep them strong. I pray that they would be so in tune with you, Father, that Lord, that they would see that their call is to not just make America Continue to make America great. Let's see a revival sweep through our nations. Be with our local governments, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would bind evil where evil is, God, and I pray that you would allow holiness to flourish where godly men and women are in those positions. Father, I pray that we would see when we follow you how a nation flourishes and how a city flourishes. But when we pull you from everything, how cities are destroyed. God, I pray that you would be with us as individuals right now, Lord. I pray that you would help us to live in the Holy Spirit. God, I pray that we wouldn't have hate or bitterness to this generation that's causing this chaos. But Lord, I pray that you just help us to know how to, how to introduce them to Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would be with
with our community. Pray that you'd be with our police. I pray that you'd give them a special portion of blessing and renewed strength. Pray that you'd give them wisdom. But Father, we love you and we praise you. And God, we don't live in fear. We can live in anger. In fact, I know, I know I, there's times when I've been angry the last few days. We don't live in anger. We live in peace, knowing you've got this. And we pray that through this revival would sweep through our own hearts, through our church, through the churches in our community, churches in our nation, and around the world. Father, we pray for another great awakening. We love you. We praise you. And it's in your holy name, the name we love, the name of Jesus we pray, and that Holy Spirit that we follow. praise you in your name. Amen. All right. God bless you. Go in victory, and we will see you real soon. Ann, Ann Smith, it's good to see you. <laughs> I just...